2020 has been a terrible year, we all know that by now, which almost makes me feel a bit guilty writing this list. Yet, football has presumed in some normal capacity and all big competitions of the year were concluded, aside from the Euros and the Olympics that were postponed to next summer, so I can feel really justified when saying these words. The players on this list did not necessarily have the worst performances on the pitch this year, but they are all included into this list based on one main criterion standards. This shortlist includes great or potentially great players, in one particular case a GOAT, who fell off the curve in 2020 and didn't live up to the expectations. Whether these expectations are based on price tag, reputation or a combo of both, the result is still the same. These five gentlemen had a, had a terrible year 2020 by their own standards. In one particular case, it might be excused for off-pitch factors, but still, a bad year is a bad year. Without further ado, let's dive into the business and check out the five players who, subjectively of course, had the worst year in 2020. Before everything, uh, like, share and subscribe to the channel, enable notifications to receive all the updates, follow us on social media at SarPSP on Twitter and on Pitch Sideboard on Instagram. Let's get to the business. Number 5. Christian Eriksen Poor Christian Eriksen, the guy was linked at a certain point in 2019 with the likes of Real Madrid and Barcelona, and a year later finds himself benchwarming for Gagliardini at Inter and linked to a move to Arsenal which is just horrendous. The Danish international has already out of favour with Mourinho and his last few months with Tottenham, and Jose made his clear that he won't suit his style of play, so he left to Conte's Inter. That move proved even worse than being on the bench under Mourinho, as he struggled to get any significant game time, his appearance is very limited and his impact is even more so. As it stands, he is very low at the pecking order at the club, behind the likes of Nicola Barella, Ashraf Hakimi and Gali Abdini, and he will regret probably leaving Spurs in the first place, a side that currently could have done with some extra creative power alongside the ever-prominent duo of Kane and Son. It does not get worse for a player of his calibre than being substituted in the 86th minute in the crucial Champions League home fixture where Inter needed the win to qualify. Christian Eriksen basically switched from an outfit where he cannot fit anymore to a side where he just does not fit from the start. Conti's extra defensive approach, coupled with a focus on quick transition based on Lukaku up front, always meant that someone like Eriksen won't be having too much input because that kind of tactics does not suit him his rhythm settler profile on the pitch. Hopefully for him, he can show us some of the magic that made him a very demanded player 12 months ago in 2021, because it's a real shame to see him waste his career pick years under someone like Antonio Conte. Number 4. Kepa Aretha Balaga Imagine this, you work at a company that hired you for an outlandish price tag with massive expectations and you don't perform well, so they hire another employee with one third of your salary who outperforms you and sends you working as an archive man for said company. Well, that's basically the story of Kepa Aretha Balaga, who was brought in with a ridiculous price tag of 75 million euros at 23 years of age to be the next beta check. Unfortunately, it didn't work out that well for him. Despite starting consistently for the most part of 2020, his performances were not exactly setting the world on fire. Numerous mistakes, a lack of commanding nature in the net, and other factors made him gradually fall behind Caballero from all goalkeepers to the point where the latter started ahead of Kepa against Wolves in the last game of the Premier League season, a crucial game with Chelsea's Champions League spot in big jeopardy. By the start of the new season, and after another calamitous performance against Liverpool, Chelsea realised that they probably spent too much money on the wrong target. So they went into Rennes, from which they bought Peter Cech way back in 2004, and got the Senegalese goalkeeper Edward Mendy for roughly 25 million euros, which was both an instant upgrade on Kepa's unsecure performances as a goalkeeper, and the steal of a transfer window, considering Mendy's performances with Lampard's side so far, keeping 10 clean sheets in all competition since joining the club. It's a matter of time before Kepa is shown the door it seems, but few will be the clubs that will be racing to sign a goalkeeper with such a bad reputation even for quarter of his original fee. Number 3. Paul Pogba There is no football list with the word worst that should involve a World Cup winner. 
Unfortunately, this one has two of them, and there is a big chance you guessed the second one by now. This is an entry under the banner price tag slash reputation combo. The French midfielder is some sort of schizophrenic player. While he sometimes barely makes the cut into the starting 11 at Old Trafford and is consistently debated whether he should start or not, he is a no-brainer for Didier Deschamps France and churns out great performances for Le Bleu consistently. Unlike Christian Eriksen, for example, he can actually produce magic for Manchester United from time to time, and we also glimpses of what a baller he can be. Yet he doesn't seem to act that way for the most part. Now with the inclusion of the likes of Bruno Fernandes, arguably United's best player, and Donny van de Beek, he's even more of an afterthought which, again, should not be said for a 100 million euros tagged World Cup winner. However, that's the reality of things at the moment, and when Paul Pogba becomes a substitute for Fred, who was originally brought as a substitute for him, you know things are not going smooth for the Frenchman. Nor he, did his agent, have helped his case as well. Mino Raiola stated numerous times that Pogba is not in a good relationship with Solskjaer at United and went out as recently as a month ago saying that Pogba's days at Old Trafford are numbered. The player himself said in October that his biggest dream is to play under Zidane for Real Madrid, which understandably didn't sit well with the club's board, manager and certainly with some of his peers. Recently reports suggested that a swap deal is in place involving either Pogba and Cristiano Ronaldo or Pogba Paolo Dybala and another player who probably could have been on this list, swapping sides depending on the sports outlet website that you read. One thing is for sure though, life is toxic for Pogba at United and he could probably do with some fresh air. Number 2. Antoine Griezmann Another World Cup winner on this list, Griezmann is actually extending his contract for another year in terms of having another bad 12 months. Realistically though, he has shown some more signs of life than the previous entry on this list which is a welcome change. Yet as another entry falling under the category of price tag slash reputation combo, no excuses could be found for the 29 year old player to be not more important for Barcelona than what he currently is. The arguments range from coaches misusing him in the wrong position to a lack of harmony with the alongside the likes of Lionel Messi, all the way to the lack of self-confidence, which not a good thing, each on its own. However, most of the debates involving Griezmann involve all three reasons and everybody stresses on all the reasons together. The player is not getting any younger as well, which means that the window for him to show his real potential and step up his level at the deteriorating Catalan giant is shrinking by the hour. The patience of the Barcelona fans is really being tested when it comes to the former Atletico Madrid star, who has not even come close to being as clinical as he was in his six-season stint under Diego Simeone. Unlike Paul Pogba though, his club performances are well refracted in his outing with France that have been as inconsistent as ever since that World Cup win. Life might be hard at the moment for Antoine Griezmann, but he's not on his own when it comes to Barcelona's hellacious mess. Speaking of that… Number 1. Lionel Messi Let's be clear, the guy still has a great year statistically. 22 goals and 20 assists in the Liga in 2019-2020 season, but again, it's all about standards and Messi's standards are astronomically high. The fact that on his worst year at the club uh, he's still nominated for FIFA's The Best Award is a testament for his legendary status, however, the devil hides in the details. Behind the numbers and the statistics lies a sore I lost soul. A player who almost lost his passion and drive throughout the last 12 months to play at the club. The supporting cast around him is drowning him alongside them and the whole club, but that does not exempt him from shouldering some responsibility. When Barcelona win, it's all about Messi being the saviour, but when they lose, it's all down to the supporting cast. That has been some fans' logic for a few years, and it's simply wrong. As much as he has near superhuman skills at certain points, he is indeed a person made of flesh and blood, and even he can have bad days at the office. Usually when Bayern and Barcelona are lagging, Messi would step up and create the solution. In 2020 though, even Messi does not have the solution sometimes. The 8-2 thrashing by Bayern Munich was a prime outstanding example of that. Messi completely gave up on trying in that game as the game grew grimmer for his club. Add to that the whole saga of him nearly quitting the club in the summer and the insistence of the board that he won't leave unless his release clause was paid caused all sorts of turmoil in the halls of the club, and you would certainly not debate his positioning on this list and at the top of it as well. 
It feels imminent that he's leaving the club pretty soon, and it will be a big shame that the last few years of his career at the top level at Barcelona were tarnished by playing for an ineffective side to the point where he himself became a hindering factor at certain points more than actually a supportive one. He is one of the true greats of the game though, and that will always remain a fact. For this shortlist, feel free to debate it and comment what you like and don't like about it. Like, share and subscribe the video. You can follow the me on Twitter at ZSidePSP, on Instagram at BitchSidePod. If you feel like it, check out the podcast on this YouTube channel or check it out on Spotify or any other podcast listening platform. Until the next video, I was your boy the HOD of the PSP, the HOD standing for Host of Duties, and I will be seeing you soon. Goodbye.